Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're regular here, you know I review many photographic old and video related products. Now over the last couple of weeks, I've had a lot of people ask me to compare two particular cameras. I actually wasn't going to compare these two cameras because they're priced quite differently. Although I do find the one of them is actually coming down in price. So we're getting fairly close to each other. So maybe that's why people are asking me to compare these two cameras. And the two that we're looking at is both from the same manufacturer actually, is the Fujifilm X-T50 that I have here. Uh, this is my favorite travel camera. I take it out with me all the time. I've actually got fitted with it the uh, Sigma DCDN 10 to 18 X mount lenses fitted to it. Uh, in full frame terms, that's about 15 to 27, something around that. So it's ultra wide to wide angle. Uh, the X-T50 is beautifully designed. Uh, lovely, lovely feeling camera, lovely camera to use, lovely camera to hold. So the X-T50 is the first camera and the other one people have asked me to compare it to is the new release, the Fujifilm X-M5, which is a really baby camera, really tiny camera. You see in my big hands, um, it's, it's really compact um, and it's quite different uh, set of dials and set of functions on this camera compared to the X-T50. One thing that is carried over from the X-T50, because this was released in May in 2024, and this was released in October of 2024, but when they released the X-T50, they put a, a film simulation dial on the camera, and um, that's carried over to the X-M5. And all that is, is basically, sets, I say all it is, if you're shooting JPEGs, it sets film simulations. So it can simulate across black and white, uh, Provia, and all the other film, sim uh, well, film stock that Fujifilm used to make. Uh, it only works with JPEGs. It doesn't work with the raw images. So that's really handy if you're shooting raw and JPEG, where you can have the raw, which is the raw image of the actual uh, file that you've taken. So that'd be full color. Um, and you can have this dial set to either say across black and white. So you get the best of both worlds. You get really good quality black and white images with a JPEG and you get really high quality uh, uh, raw images. So um, kind of useful. I tend not to use this dial to be honest. It's a redundant dial. I really would like to see Fuji in an upcoming you know, firmware release enable you to set this to what you want. Because on the XS20, you can actually change this dial to what you want it. It could be exposure compensation. It could be ISO settings. It could be oh, so many different features you could set this dial for. Uh, but for now, it is only film simulations on the X-T50 and on the X-M5. It's exactly the same on the X-M5. You can only use it for adjusting your film simulations. Now, that is pretty much the only real similarity between the X-T50 and the XM5. Now the XM5 has the three inch articulating screen, which a lot of people love if you're vlogging. So um, great if you're vlogging, your articulating screen is great because obviously you can film yourself. Um, it's a great little vlogging camera. It does up to 6.2K open gate. That means it films the whole width of a sensor. And then when you come to edit it, you can crop that to a 16 by nine, or you can crop it to nine by 16 vertical for your YouTube shorts, your TikToks and what have you. Uh, basically any, you know, online content that requires a vertical video. Um, so great video camera, great video content camera, content creation camera, mic jack on the back. It's handy that it's on the back because it doesn't obscure the screen when you open the screen. So very, very handy for that. So if you're into content creation and you want to do a lot of content creation, but you also want to do photography, then the XM5 could well be your ideal camera. Um, the XC50, on the other hand, has the more, I would say, traditional articulating screen, which photographers like, particularly me. I love the articulating screen. Um, I love it because it's behind the camera and I find that more discreet when I'm out and about taking photographs. So the XC50 has the articulating screen. So if you want to do vlogging with this camera, which you can, but you'd have to put an external monitor on it so you can actually see what you're doing or guesswork. And with the 10 to 18 lens fitted to it, 
you wouldn't be far off if you use guesswork because uh, it is a you know an ultra wide angle lens uh, but not really designed for that sort of thing also it doesn't support 6.2k open gate it does support over sampled 4k video so the 4k video on here is awesome it's really really nice quality um, I love a video that does come off this, although I don't use it predominantly as a video camera. I use it uh, mainly as a stills camera. Um, now this lens, uh, this camera as a stills camera um, is better than the X. I say better, how did you find better? I don't really like the word better, different. Um, this camera has the 40 megapixel x trans sensor in. Now for stills, that is brilliant because it does two things. It enables you to crop it into the image if you're doing wildlife, sports, or something where you need to crop into the image, you can do that without losing resolution or very little resolution on the X-T50. Also great if you're printing very large prints. Uh, you can do that because of a 40 megapixel sensor. Although to be fair, the X-M5 with its 26 megapixel sensor it's still really, really good. So this one has the 26 megapixel sensor in the XM5, which is still great for doing photography uh, and a certain amount of cropping, but not to the extent that you can on the XC50. Uh, that has the X 26 megapixel X-Trans sensor inside the XM5. Also, the XT50 has in-body image stabilization, where this XM5 has no in-body image stabilization. If you want to use stabilization, you're reliant on the in-lens image stabilization. Not every lens has it. This one does. It's the uh, kit lens that has got in-lens image stabilization. Uh, but if you use these little pancake lenses, these don't have in-lens image stabilization. So these work great on the XT50 because that has the in-body image stabilization. But these lenses don't have any in-lens image stabilization. Just make sure you set a faster shutter speed on the X, uh, XM5. Also, the X-T50 has a viewfinder. It's a 2.3 million dot viewfinder, nice and sharp. It's wonderful. And having a viewfinder is great. It's traditional to look for a viewfinder. A lot of people do prefer that. And certainly if you're in really bright sunny conditions, you may find a viewfinder beneficial. Uh, whereas the XM5 has no viewfinder, you are reliant on the back of a screen. Although to be fair, when I was out in Malmesbury and we were taking these photographs, I used the XT50 most of the time, uh, not because of its bigger sensor, it's because I had this lens fitted to it, the 10 to 18 lens, uh, constant f2.8 aperture, uh, and I wanted to go indoors and get some shots in the uh, Abbey and it was just more convenient just to use that camera as opposed to the uh, XM5. But I did use the screen on both of these cameras most of the time and they're really bright. They're absolutely fine outdoors. So I don't see that as a major issue, but it is quite, uh, it can be quite important for some people that do love to use the viewfinder. Uh, image quality is great from both of them. Obviously the X-T50, as I said, has got a 40 megapixel sensor. So in theory, it should be a much better, uh, the images should be much better. I don't think they're much better. I think they're better for certain situations. As I say, particularly if you're doing sports or you're doing wildlife and you need to crop into the image. But if you're just taking nice images like this and you get the framing pretty close to right on the day, then both cameras are gonna serve you well. Both cameras are gonna serve you fantastically. So um, they're both produced really nice images. These are taken with the X-T50. So, you know, you are gonna get beautiful clarity, beautiful sharpness, uh, just really, really nice images at the end of the day. You know, all these images will be up on my Flickr page. So if you wanna take a look at them on Flickr, I would uh, strongly suggest that you do rather than looking at them here, cause I'm only flicking through them. Um, but um, yeah, you're not gonna be disappointed with um, either camera as far as image quality. That goes for video and that goes for stills. Neither of them have a video record limit, so you've got no problems there either. Um, and they all support, both support the Fujifilm simulations. They both take the same battery as well, which is the W126S battery. It's okay, but I would strongly suggest you put a couple of spare batteries in your pocket uh, when you are going out and about doing photography or doing video. So yeah, they both take the same battery. They both support uh, USB-C charging and power delivery. 
I've had this great again when you're out and about. Uh, if you stop for lunch, charge a battery up using the USB-C and the portable power block. Um, so that's uh, fair enough. They both have a mini HDMI port as well, which is um, part of a course for cameras of this size. And they both have uh, mic and headphone jack. Uh, the mic jack on the back of the, is on the back of the XM5, so it doesn't block the monitor. And the headphone jack is on the side. Uh, but on the XT50, in a traditional place, both the headphone and mic jack are on the side of the, uh, under this flap and on the side there. Uh, so they're both full featured hybrid cameras. Uh, to get to video on the XM5, you have to go through the mode button on the back here uh, and then choose video on the XM5. It's on the PASM dial, so you select video on the PASM dial. Um, neither one is better than the other really, they're just different. They both have the uh, Fuji multi-interface shoe. I call it a Fuji multi-interface shoe. It takes uh, things like the Tascam XLR adapter, so you can put XLR microphones into the XM5 and into the XT50 for video recording. Uh, the adapter doesn't need cables, so it takes its power and the audio goes straight through the shoe. So they both support that. Um, and the weight, the XC50 is heavier than the XM5, not by a great deal. The XM5 is about 370 grams. This is about 450, uh, something along those uh, lines. So um, yeah, the XC50 is that little bit heavier, uh, but it does have a viewfinder where the XM5 doesn't have a viewfinder. Um, I think that's pretty much uh, the major differences. There are going to be other subtle differences. Handling is different. The grip is a bit bigger on the XT50 because it's a bigger body. It's a taller body, so you've got a, a better grip. They both have two command dials, which is really nice on a compact body like the XM5 to have two command dials, uh, but they do. Uh, the X, uh, XT50 has the one on the back and uh, the one on the front which is really handy, but it has the Fuji style sort of shutter uh, control button on the uh, dial on the top here for uh, uh, setting your shutter speeds, which is uh, quite common and traditional for Fuji cameras and exposure, a, a dedicated exposure compensation dial there, where on the XM5, it doesn't have a dedicated exposure compensation, but I've uh, mapped this command dial on the back here for exposure compensation, and then the front command dial I've uh, set up for adjusting your aperture or shutter speed depending on what uh, mode that you're in. So, um, and as I said, the film simulation dial on the side there, which can't be remapped to anything else. So, yeah, that's basically the differences between the XM5 and the XT50. It is a much smaller grip on the XM5, uh, but I found even walking around all day and swapping between the two cameras, I didn't have an issue with the grip. And the nice thing is with having the two cameras and it takes the same battery, you don't have to put in your camera bag two different types of batteries. It's only the one type of battery. That's a small advantage, not a major advantage, but it is a, a small advantage. Also, the X-T50 has a built-in flash where the XM5 has no built-in flash. To me, that's no advantage whatsoever because I don't use the flash, but um, it does have a built-in flash. That can be quite handy if you're in a studio and you want to use it to fire external flashes, uh, you know, external strobes. So that can be quite useful. Um, or even if you're out and about and you use an external flash, then you can use that to fire it. But um, not something I find particularly useful, but it does have it if you do need a camera with a built-in flash. So there we go. That's the fundamental differences between the uh, XM5 and the X-T50. To summarise, I would say basically the X-T50 has a 40 megapixel sensor uh, and the viewfinder and it has the, um, uh, it has the tilting screen as opposed to the uh, three inch articulating screen. Um, other than that, they're both going to take great images and great video. And I would suggest you take a look at these images on my Flickr page. That'd be fantastic. So there we go. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Please share it if you feel other people might find this useful. That would be fantastic. And don't forget to like and, sh uh, like and subscribe. There we go. Thanks very much. Cheers for now. Bye.